You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. All right, welcome to another 8% Nation podcast where we are dedicated to helping you as an insurance agent get into the 8%. Cody, dude, we just got back from a really, really epic and fun trip. Yep. Um, Why don't you tell the people sort of what we were doing, why we were doing it, just kind of give give, give an overview of what we just got back from. Yes, we were doing the 8% Monster Retreat. So the top 8%, which are monsters... Collided. We did a little collab event with. We Coach might have Burt. been with the top one percent. Yeah, in, this at that is retreat. true. I think it was the point eight percent of the. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was eight nine people. So it was like the next level. So you got the top eight percent. Then you've got the ten percent of that group, which is the point eight percent. Dude, I like the point eight percent. You like that? I think that's a branding play we could. Dude, run that's with. that's new, man. Right? That's the next level. Which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. Um, not only the event, but branding. But the retreat went well. Several big clients and friends of ours were there. Um, it seems that it seems to be a trend. Power players show up. No matter where we are, they're there. Uh, there's something to be said for that. Yeah, we always find ourselves at the same kind of events too. Like I know Matt Monero is doing an event in Dallas, and like three of those people were like going to go down there, and I was thinking about going there. I didn't even know Ramiz and those guys were going. Yep. You know, so it's like we all kind of like kind of finding the same sort of event. We're all kind of doing the same kind of thing. It seems like there's something you could learn from that. The the real power behind, if I can ever challenge anybody like to get around stuff like that, the real power behind those is it's the networking. Oh, yeah. The coaching's great. You'll pick up some nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. But whether you pick up nuggets from the coaching, you'll get you'll, the networking's unbelievable, and you'll also always pick up nuggets from the coaching, but in but from the conversations too. For sure. Leave We leave events, whether we're putting them on or hanging out at them, with the biggest freaking ideas ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. I spent all weekend thinking about stuff. I even planned an event that I haven't even, like a big event that I have, nobody even knows about yet because Uh-oh. I went to that and I someone agree. gave me an idea. No, it's incredible. So let's, let's start from the beginning and we're going to unpack this event. So we left Thursday? Or Wednesday? Yeah, Thursday. No, Thursday morning. Okay. It started Thursday at like 5 o'clock. Roll in. We roll into, I mean, just paint us the picture. Roll into Coat Birch, Coat Birch Lodge in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yep, Christiana, uh, yep. just south of Murfreesboro. How many square feet do you think that place was? 15,000? 11,000? Mm, I don't think it was. Well, it's it big. big. I mean, with the meeting rooms above the garage and all that, it was huge. Well, it was Oh, super, I didn't even see that part. <laughs> yeah, over the garage, there's like a big old like extra. Seriously? Yeah, there's extra. They do like classroom up there. Above the garage. But anyways, All right. n- n- not important. But so, yeah, yeah, it was huge. It was big. Um, so paint us the picture, man. Yeah, it was, uh, w- w- we got in. We had a networking hour. Um, I stayed in the master suite, which was awesome. Uh, the, there was a sauna in the, in the bathroom. Nice. Nobody even knew that. I didn't even use it. I should have used it. I should have tried it out. Uh, master suite. Um, we, get un- we unpack. We shoot a little content, some video. You got to always do video and content. Then we started a little networking time, a little networking hour. Uh, then we eat dinner. We had, uh, what was it? Uh, was It was barbecue. Yep. It was like chicken. some pulled chicken barbecue yep. uh, with like some potato salad and beans and cornbread and all that. Awesome, awesome meal. Uh, and then we just spent some time getting to know each other. We have a brief, you know, hour session where we, where we have ever, everybody like say what they want to get out of it. I actually said, you know, I, I spoke up and was able to share what I liked about each person there and why they were there and why I was impressed and um, why I loved them. And uh, we were able to ask some questions and talk through some stuff. I ended up jumping down and asking some questions, you know, of people in the audience about culture and team and building something and a sales team and organization. And it just, man, I always leave with so many freaking ideas. I know. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, maybe I'm weird, but... I actually have more fun in like the social times built in than I do with the content. Maybe it's you I'm always a- say that. Maybe it's because I'm ADD and I'm like listening. And I'm like, that's good. That's good. I'm going to write that down. But then I forget it like uh, half the time. Yeah. Because I'm not so much like a classroom guy. I'm more of like a networker. And I feel like the way that I've found success is that I've kind of just connected with the right people. Yeah. AKA business partners with you. I mean, it's like, you know, I kind of see people and I'm like, wow, I really respect what you're doing. Let's see if we can do these things together, you know? And uh, you're so, great at that, by the well, way. Well, it was fun. It's just fun because I think that's really the core of most people ignore that. Like, what is it about you? You're always interviewing me. What I mean, I'm, I'm gonna flip the freaking 
flip deal here. Flip the script. What, what is it about you that makes you want to seek that out, spend time to connect with people, actually care? Because most people, most people ignore that stuff, man. Most people are scared of that. Most people avoid being social. Yeah, I, I think it comes with really any any big thing that I've ever done in my life has usually come from a, a created relationship. Mm. It really hasn't been Say any, that again. any exception. Anything big that I've done in my life has been the result of a created relationship, period. Wow. Um, I don't think I've ever really like had a unique solo idea mm-hmm. that I then implemented, ran with, executed on, and then reaped the results of any magnitude compared to what I've done with other people. And maybe that's just because I'm a basketball player. Probably. And I, I'm a team sports guy, and I've always enjoyed a team effort, uh, team activities. I've always, I would rather make, you know, it's not about the money for me. It's about kind of who I'm doing it with, mm-hmm. you know. And so I'm just drawn to people. I don't know what that is about me, but I really enjoy, I feel like there's so much wisdom typically um, in an individual that no matter who it is, I can learn. Even guys <laughs> like Ryan Lodi, right? I mean, you know, younger guys, 22 year old producers. But what I take from that guy is, is good grief, like the work ethic that you, that he has. And then yeah. therefore the results, he challenges me, man. 10, 12 hours a day running appointments, door knocking. Well, I mean, it's like, what am I doing? Why, why am I too good to work 12 hour days? Oh, no, no, not at all. Well, yeah. okay. So it's like you, you get around guys like that and gals like that. And all of a sudden you get challenged. And so I just try and like, you know, I, I'm a big, pers- I pursue wisdom mm-hmm. and wisdom is found in others, whether it's their book or whatever it is. Two, two takeaways from what you're saying right now. Um, first one is most people think that when you get to a certain level, you like slow down or when you get, when you become a person of interest or you start helping people or whatever, you know, start building a business or whatever it is. But I mean, we, we work a lot and we enjoy what we do. Yeah. Um, I had a 13 hour day yesterday and yep. freaking loved it. It Me was jam packed. It was crazy. Your day was insane. Uh, that's the first takeaway. The second thing is, you talk about relationships and how valuable they can be and how you need to connect and care and actually try. Like if you're not, you're missing out. And I can attest to that because I look back probably, you know what, about two years ago. And about two years ago, if I look back at Cody Askins, let's call it August of 2017, I didn't care to meet anybody. I was like, ah, relationships suck. I got to talk to people like I got to, you know, sit there and talk to you for 30 minutes. Or a relationship is a means to an end. Yeah. Yeah. Or like it didn't have to continue. It was like, okay, I can, I can build a relationship quickly. Like I was like the, it was like the life insurance salesman inside of me. Okay. Build a relationship, make the sale, move on. Where's the next relationship? And it was, I was just, I was just wrong and my business wasn't growing. And I look back and over the last two years, I've made so many, and you comment all the time. I made so many lasting relationships and my network of people that actually like trust and care and that I can like call at any time and they'll care in a conversation with me like we're best friends has hundred thousand X. Oh yeah. And it's just super valuable. But I made a mistake and used to ignore that element of business. I ignored it. We didn't even talk. We didn't even plan on talking about this today. That's what's no. cool about this podcast. It just always transitions and moves and it's like, it like lives. I was, stupid (laughs) well i was too honestly early on um i think that was a big mistake that i made as well where to me i was like i even had friends of mine um i'm sure they won't be watching this podcast but if they did they would raise their hand they would tell me landon you're always selling to me you're always selling to me (laughs) you know what i mean and i'm like what do you mean i'm just talking but in the back of my mind the conversation and the reason i picked up the phone to talk to them was to ask them for something yeah and and if i didn't ask them for something it was to soften the blow for the next time that I asked them for something. <laughs> and you, know you actually saying? thought like that no, too, actually, like, like I did too. Like I would say things like, I'm not trying to ask you anything, but I want to show you this. But I was actually, my, my intention of that call was only to make the next time that I asked them mm. for something easier. Genuinely, when yep. I look back, you know, and I, and I feel like um, that just won't get you very far in life because, you, you know, I feel, people can see through that junk. Well, think about this. Uh, people that have done anything big in the world, especially in the insurance industry, did they do it alone? Heck no. Not normally. So they had a team. I didn't used to have a team two years ago. Yeah. Think about that now. Yeah. Uh, another huge take. I, d- I didn't care about relationships. People that do big stuff, like they have other people that they have relationships with and that can help them and that can grow with. 
uh, and they can lean on or, you know, help each other. Um, and Bert said something at the lodge. Uh, he has like a top 25 that he can call on at any point and he stays in touch with so that just in case if he, you know, it's just like his closest top 25, his top 25 biggest supporters. And I thought as connected as I am, I don't know who my top 25 is. I mean, I can, I can write it down and I'm not actively talking to them every week or trying to, you know, and I'm missing out. Yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good segue into sort of, you know, the, the retreat. So, um, because in order to have that top 25, you have to have 25 people that actually want to take your phone call, Mm -hmm. which means that you need to be interesting. Oh, totally. Which means you can't be self-serving. Two years ago, I didn't have a top 25 that would have took, you know, I just didn't, or they were, they were all in the office maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And what I mean by interesting is not like, wow, I parachute and do a, you know, hang gliding and all this stuff. What I mean is, is like, I think people are drawn to authenticity. And so that's part of what you talked about at the, uh, yep. at the lodge. So would you mind just kind of unpacking? So you did the 8% monster retreat as a follow-up to those that bought a monster premiere ticket. Yeah. Okay. And then we, that was, uh, how long ago was 8%? Four weeks ago? Four weeks to the day. Yeah. Okay. So four weeks ago, and then we had the retreat last weekend. And then you spoke on what? On the mul- the bulk of your conversation on Saturday was about what? At the retreat? It was, bulk of it was a uh, personal brand. Yep. It was building up, and I didn't plan on talking about that, by the way. It was a conversation the night before that shifted my whole talk. And it was all about how you need to be authentic, you need to be transparent, you need to be genuine, you need to care, and you need to be being a monster. Because if you want to be, if you want to get attention, you want to grow your brand, and you want to become a celebrity in your space. And I don't mean celebrity as like an egotistical, hey, look at me kind of a thing. I mean a celebrity as in people... Look at me as a person of interest, okay? If that's what you want, then you've got to be consistent and you've got to be focused on growing your brand. Most people, most people aren't. They don't think that way. And if people, you know, there's people that respect what we do. And if that's the case, it's only because it's almost been four years of just constantly putting stuff out every freaking day. Let's talk about that. So consistent with growing your brand. Let's let's. Let's brass tax this and break yeah. it down. What what is that? What does that mean? Being consistent with growing your brand sounds good. But well, what yeah, what, what are you trying to do in the world, and how can you consistently educate people? As you say, people work with people, educate them. How can you consistently educate people, and then one year later, two years later, three years later, four years later, a decade later, they look at you as this person of interest that can help them with because you've been educating and giving away so much free stuff for so long. Yep, and. There's been a few pivotal moments in my life where that's like stood out to me and it stands out a lot now because putting out content for three years and eight months, that'll be in two days, by the way, Yeah. Uh, that I've been putting out free content to help insurance agents and educate them and take them to another level. It's uh, people respect that. They look at it, they look at you differently because of that and whether you're trying to generate leads or recruits or sell insurance policies you can still build a personal brand that lives on forever that create, creates passive leads that people respect that but you got to be consistent and you got to do some big stuff along the way and care about people and focus on educating them what are some big things that we can do along the way mine was a conference you know like okay okay i was talking to an agent uh, recently and they're like I don't know what to do. You know, I want to be this person that my audience in my city looks at. I said, well, dude, throw a, you know, massive freaking business networking event and get everyone's attention in that city. You probably don't have to spend that much on Facebook to get people to show up either. I bet. No, no, no. You could just be a connector that reaches out to people that they like gets referrals and gets people involved. And I'm not saying charge people. I'm just saying like in general, it's like, I mean like to get people there just to put a marketing spin. I bet you, you could spend 600 bucks. Yeah. Get like 50 registrations. You get more by just, creating a top 25 in your city and banging on them. Yeah, that's good. So, okay, so an event, what's another thing we can do? Um, I mean, for me, it was 8% Nation. A, a podcast, like something, something weekly. Like we've got multiple things that come out every week now. Yeah. Shows, videos, everything else. Maybe it's, a, maybe, it's a, maybe it's every week you interview someone in your city that's a freaking power player that's doing something big that other people in your city could learn from. Because... The thing about the most people think they most people in our industry think so short term because so many people fail that they're like, okay, I got to sell an insurance policy today. And yeah, you got to sell an insurance policy today. But if everyone knew everyone in your city knew you as this 
or in your state or whatever knew you as this person of interest that they want to, that, that they think about, when they think about the word insurance, who do they think about in your city? When you think about the word, word insurance, who do you think about in your city? And they don't think about me in my city. Something's, something's wrong, right? I never even heard of you and you were spending the most amount on Facebook. I bet you... When I first met you, you were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook to generate leads. I may spend I more money were. on Facebook and on marketing than anyone in our city by far. Well, I was especially interesting. Listen related. to this. I was the largest digital marketing agency in Springfield with 38 employees, and you spent more than I did. So who else is going to compete? I mean, there's they, nobody. <laughs> you know so it's like you were, you know, but I know who you are. Yeah. Nor did I, you know, I actually thought you were lying when you were telling me how much you spent. I was like, no yeah. way, dude. There's no way you're doing that. You're just full of crap. It's true. So, well, okay. You know what I think is interesting? I think people get things backwards. Um, I think sometimes people try to become people of interest before they've mastered any sort of trait or yeah. mastered anything at all. And so I feel like my opinion is, is that there's a lot of people that want to be coaches and personal coaches and they want to be influencers on this or that or, or whatever it is. But, you know, to me, it's like that comes after you've accomplished something. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, because, I mean, you know, how, how often... Y- you always talk about the amount of respect oh, yeah. that we get because we throw a massive insurance conference. And it's, it's not even massive move. in my eyes. Well, it's, it's just a... You can just feel it. People... And it's not... And this is not to beat our chests. This is just to say it's worth the investment, you know, because Cody's oh, not... Co- Cody's not, you know, bashful to say like this, you know, Aperson Nation... He directly to you guys. He loses money for now. to connect you guys. Okay, think about that for a second. A lot of people, you know, would react to that and be like, "Oh my goodness! Like, what is he thinking? Like, maybe there's a better way to do it." That's or you know dumb. what ends up? You know what ends up happening? People end up trying to shrink your vision. Yeah. They well, do. Hey, but what if you what if you did it like this, and then you just had it, and you're like, just yeah, no, do no, no. a little ballroom and don't pay any other speakers. And let's grow, and, and maybe it'll you know it may take some time. And, and I'm it's like, like, dude, I'm 29. I do not want to look back at 40 and be like, it's almost there. And no matter what you're investing, okay, what I've seen is your trajectory of your business. Who who cares about that number? Because in the grand scheme of things, yeah, that number means nothing. Because we added 11 marketing clients yesterday. Yesterday. And a lot of them came from eight percent. True, um, and my but my my point is is that like, it's not about cash flowing on eight percent because if that right. if that's our goal, then it's a completely different event, completely different. Yeah, yeah. If if yeah. if that company was created to make a lot of money from throwing that event, then I probably wouldn't have. No, you. Still or be, it would I wouldn't have been, still be doing it. Or it would have been a tiny little ballroom somewhere for free, and we would yeah. pay for food, and it'd been a day deal. Nobody's going to show up. Like all industry conferences, especially insurance, they're in a traditional ballroom. They got hundred and you know ninety two people in them. They got nobody that nobody cares about, and and there's usually a I'm not showing up. There's usually like a self serving like I'm here. We're trying to recruit you. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. something like that. This is know? also very true. So, but but okay. So so bringing it back. So we're we're talking a lot about this person of interest, this personal brand. Um, you know, unpack that a little bit more because we we did. You did a session. I did a session. Coach Burt did a session. You know, yep. what else? What else do you think you could kind of like summarize and give to the people of things you talked about on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, mine was about you know, hey, who do you want to be in the world? You know. Um, uh, Amelis wants to be the DI queen. You know, there's a massive opportunity What's for the that. What's the DI queen? Disability income. Disability, disability income. income insurance queen. And, and I'm like, there's a massive opportunity for that. No one is doing a personal brand around that. I could not only own that market, but teach her how to also own that. And that's what we're doing. Own that freaking market. So whatever the case is, like there's, you know, um, I, he won't mind me saying it. There's Medicare Bob. You know, Justin's friends with him. Robert Bach. I, I don't I don't. I've never met the guy. But... He's all over online at selling Medicare across yeah. the country over the phone and online and, you know, supplements and advantage and all that. Like personal brand, people buy from people. They don't really buy from companies anymore. They buy from you. They're invested in you. And so to really do something big in this industry, I do feel like a personal brand is really, really important. I agree. And, and it's and something we don't talk about in our industry at all. You know what? And just to give you... People make fun of me for doing it. We'll give you some credit, right? So, and I, like I said, sometimes I feel weird, like we're just giving each other compliments. But 
This is true. That's what okay. Nate, that's what uh, Nate Offered always says. <laughs> my point is, is he that, likes it though. My point is, is that I think if you were to add, if, if we were to poll a bunch of people on, you know, who has done a good job building their personal brand in the insurance industry, I think your name would come up. You know what I mean? Well, would there was multiple eight figure, and, and again, not talking about us, but there's multiple eight eight, eight figure earners at the retreat that said no one's doing it. Yeah. Like That's I funny. Am. That's funny. So Nate actually said that your podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. is just you guys. Well, no, no, no. He, he just said that he just said he needs people in his life that he can like be around and that can challenge him. And he said, he said, it's cool. He said, cause you and Lanny can always like lift each other up and talk about how amazing the oh, other person yeah, is. I remember that. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't have anybody that like I can do that with. And he's like, it's kind of freaking cool. He said, cause he said, cause we look up to, Cody is this, you know, marketing person and he's acting like Landon's just way better. And it's yeah. like just this forever back and well, forth. It's funny. You know what he actually said, which I think is some wisdom. He said, um, it was cool. He said, most people will take the compliment and then just, it just sinks in. They're just like, Oh, and it's like feeds the, ego. yeah, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm amazing. Cody's, right? Cody's giving me these props, but yet I'm not like throwing it back over the fence because at the end of the day, I'm selfish, right? That's how most selfish people act is, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, I am the marketing, you know, and Cody yeah. is the insurance. And it, it ends up being this, like, sponge instead of, like, putting it out there. And like, and, and then you end up competing with everybody instead of, like, in my opinion, what I want to do is I want to I align myself. Boomerang? With all these. Well, what I want, here's genuinely my heart is that I want to align myself with all these, like, you know, mid-20s, mid-30s, mid-40s, whatever it is. And let's just lift each other up by our, you know, by our, each other's shirts yeah it's like whenever i'm getting up then i'm bringing you up with me and the rising tide raises all ships that's You've genuinely that a ton over the years well it's too. it's so true for marketing too but that's my heart and that's that's one of the things that we talked about with your personal brand is that you know once you're accomplished and you actually are a subject matter expert mm-hmm. then begin working on your personal brand and investing in that so let's talk about the brass tax you can share some real numbers i think with what does it take to invest in your personal brand dollars and cents i mean let's just take peace when you started your videography sort of... Me? Yeah. Whenever you started doing videos, what did it cost you to to invest in that? Nothing. What did it cost you? It had to cost you something. I mean, like a... What do you mean? Like a tripod or something? I mean... A camera? Did you buy a camera? Or what would you do? No, I used my phone. Okay. Back then. And then it evolved into what? Then you put... But I didn't know what I was doing. True. But but you learn along the way. Okay? okay. So there's something to be said for that. Some people want to learn quicker. That's why we help them. Uh, but it doesn't mean you have to give anybody money. It just means that... I was consistently putting out videos or for instance, I was training, I was, I had a local mentorship program. I had this weekly training call and every week I would train local insurance agents and I had a few remote ones or whatever, but I would mostly local, but I would record it and then put it up on YouTube. And my two most popular videos, organic videos used to be for a while was weekly insurance training call number seven and weekly insurance training call number eight. One was on how to door knock to sell insurance and one was about how to cold call to generate insurance leads. And those two did very well on YouTube. And so most people found me because of those videos yep. for the first couple years. Now, that's not true anymore. They probably still find them, but they're, they're old and they're not even that good anymore. But the point is, I was just putting out content every week, not realizing where it was going to go. It wasn't self-serving at all. I didn't monetize anything for the first 13 months. It didn't matter. I was just like, I kind of enjoy helping other people yeah. and I love our industry, so why not give back? And I did. And... It, it worked. You became a person of interest. Yeah. You became someone that people are interested in talking with. Without, I, without that ever being the point, by the way. No doubt. Well, it started with an iPhone with zero expense, and now... I was propping now up... Now look at what we have. Yeah. Right? You got, a video, you got two videographers. You got, what, $12,000 equipment back there, Dylan? How much? Uh, a mean, lot more than that. Yeah, the Pearl's then, 10, the computer's 6 okay. or 7. So you're a smart businessman, right? The studio. You, yeah. in, you invest in what's working, right? Yeah. So you started with an iPhone. And I mean, I mean, can you share with how much you have invested in the studio? Is that We've tried to figure out numbers. I know it's north of 60, 70K. Okay. And, and I bet when you start including all the cameras and TVs and lights. and. Okay. So you put your money where your mouth is. I bet it's north of 6 feet. You're not just saying, hey, you should become a person of interest and invest in your content brand. But my first video ever, yeah, right? I show this all the time. When, when, I, when I'm when i doing keynotes or when we're doing, like, I showed it at the retreat. Awful video. I talked super slow. It was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is painful. <laughs> but I set the, my phone on a shelf and leaned it up against some books to, without a tripod to click play Yeah. with an outline and thought through it all. But it didn't take... 
it wasn't like it took money. It was just that it takes, it takes consistency and it creates, it, 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 it takes like, okay, I want to educate people on this topic in this niche. And it takes just a lot of content towards it. Let me drop a knowledge bomb on you guys, okay? And this is like if they don't, stealing, they're not picking up nuggets. Stealing Bradley's. Uh, so let me let me explain exactly why this is true and what you're saying. Yeah. So when we went to the monster retreat in in Murfreesboro, um, Ryan Lodi was there, which yep. you guys hear me talk about him all the time because he's a stud. And Ramiz was there, mm-hmm. who is equally a stud, except a whole another level. Yeah. Makes, yeah. It makes everybody look. He's the grill in the room. Okay. So. Uh, Ryan Lodi every day does this daily tip from the whip. That's an Instagram and Facebook story. Yep. And Ramiz meets um, Ryan Lodi and says, hey, man, the daily tip from whip, I watched every day. Let that sink in for a second, okay? Let that sink in. Ryan Lodi, a 21-year-old final expense producer, has the owner of one of the largest final expense telecenters tuning into his content every single day. <laughs> Okay. How cool is that? That's kind of crazy if you think about it. And and it's not like, you know, Ramiz knew exactly who Ryan was. That's nuts. Like, that's nuts. It is weird. You've got, yeah, you've got a 21-year-old, and then you've got a guy that owns, you know, operates a tens of millions of dollars company, or whatever it is, and they're friends on Facebook, and he notices the new agent's content, Dude, and, and they talk about it. Let that sink in. I mean, that's not a small thing. That's just freaking cool. That's a little nugget that like, you know, you may look on your Facebook Live, you may see a little number in the corner, one, two, three. Yeah. But like, what if those... Well, okay, you also bring up a really good point too. Most people, they do like these live videos and this content and they think, oh, I've only got one person watching or I've only got three people watching. When we do live stuff, it, yeah, it's grown over time. But think about the fact that my oldest video that I think is total garbage has been seen 5,000 times. Yep. So don't think about in the moment what you're doing and then talk yourself out of doing it because it's not doing what you thought it would do immediately. Think about the long-term effect. Think about the consistency aspect. Think, and think about the brand awareness aspect. Like the, the facial recognition. Like yeah. they walked up and talked to each other because of that. And they knew who each other were. So I haven't even thought about yet. In fact, it's just dawning on me. I have not looked. We, we put these podcasts on all the different platforms. I haven't even looked at how many times they've been downloaded. No idea. Because I don't care. Haven't yeah, even, that's not even why we're doing it. Haven't even looked at it. Haven't even thought about it. And guess what? It'll grow over time. Well, but and if what we will quit, is, it won't. And someone will stumble onto one of our podcasts, and they'll be like, oh, wow. And then they'll just binge them all. Yeah. That's how it works. That but is my how point it works. is, is that, like, I don't even know how many people have downloaded this podcast, right? Well... Some people would be like, well, you know, I'm not getting traction. I've already done, you know, seven hours of content already on this one. It's like... We're probably not getting traction on, like, iTunes. We're probably getting all of our traction on Facebook and YouTube, which is where we put all of our content out true. anyway. But I bet you there's a final expense or a Medicare or some recruiting agent or somewhere out there that's going to f- hear this podcast, connect with our brand, and reach out to us. Yep. And when you're that person, tell me. Tell me. Yes. And everybody wants to hear that. It's interesting. So... You have any other nuggets you want to break down for for them? No, we're getting we're, we'll, we'll go about thirty minutes. That seems to be like a common thread. Sometimes we'll go longer. Okay. Um, anything else I want to add? I want to say that uh, I think anyone can be a person of interest. I think anyone can be a personal brand. I think anyone could have got to where we've gotten right now, which isn't even that big. Is but in our industry, it feels big because nobody else does it. It's, yeah. it's which is dumb. Uh, but most pe- the reason most people don't is they don't do it consistently enough for long enough, which means, you know what that means? It just means they gave up. Yeah. <laughs> like when you simple. say you're going to do something, you start something, just don't give up. Yeah. When we don't post and a wow. weekly, you're not, you're not excited about that. Oh when my we, gosh. When we miss a video, you don't want to be daily here. You oh, you're not like around, a show. You don't want to be around here yeah. when we forget to post a show. Yeah. And if Cody sees, sees that, right, Dylan? That's, that's you know what? The, that's not the most comfortable feeling. We forgot to post a show at 2 o'clock. We still did it later. We still did it every Monday the whole year. But we were a few hours late because we were in the middle of like a tour or something, you know. And one of the videos we pre-recorded, you know, it was it was trash or, you know, it broke or whatever, however that works. And, but you're right. But we could have just been like, yeah, well. 
we tried. Yeah, it wasn't fun. I'm like, heard, no, heard we're going to freaking do it because most people give up. And that's not that's not us, you know, which is a credit to our team because they don't give up and they are freaking consistent. They are unbelievably consistent. Let's take a few minutes. Um, are you you are you willing to give any teasers at all on like personal brand stuff you're putting together right now? I am building a and it's funny I haven't even put this out yet, but that's that's the point of the podcast and Landon asking me questions on the spot. Uh, I am building a personal branding boot camp where I'm going to bring about probably super small group, 20, 30 people to Springfield, Missouri to spend a couple of days with us to talk through everything that we've done, everything that we're currently doing and how you can apply it to your business. Cool. With takeaway steps, action steps, everything. Yep. Complete content schedule, complete, you know, notes, PowerPoint, uh, one-on-one branding sessions. We're going to probably cover hotel and food and all kind of stuff, but, but it's something that I'm working on making a reality over the next, like, I don't know, 90 days or something. If anybody wants to raise their hand on that, just comment on the video and we'll, we'll put you in the queue, but I don't think you even have packages put together or anything like that yet. Right. Close. Okay, cool. So then we'll email it out or something. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, it's just preliminary right now, but I could see it's something that'll take off quick and it'll fill up within a, like a week or a few days because it's something that our industry just needs more than we think we need. Well, and you know why it's so important is because if uh, typically most people are either building or headed towards building a team. Yeah. In order to do that, you've got to be accessible and you've got to be creating content and have a personal brand. If you think you can build a team without thinking that you either already have a brand that you're not thinking about yeah. or go towards building it, you're mistaken. Well, two things real quick. You, you brought up, you, you broke down a website that generates about six, they, they write about 6,000 Medicare policies a year, probably yep. something, something like that. Supposedly that's a guess. And it's because they have a brand in the market. Yeah. So guess what? Right. They did that. The other thing is most people think, well, I don't want to spend, you know, a few thousand bucks, five grand, whatever on like a, a boot camp or a coach or 20 grand or whatever it is. Um, and they don't. But guess what? Having a personal brand, I will make hundreds of millions of dollars over the course of my life, and maybe eventually a billion, off of the framework and foundation that I've laid over the last four years. I agree. Think about that for a second. Totally. Is it worth investing and in trying to grow your personal brand? Yeah. You tell me. Yeah. Cash is trash. What? Grant Cardone says that. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're all, if you don't spend it, you're, you know, paying taxes on it anyways, you know, it's like, that's what I look at. It's like, sheesh. It's like, if I can invest in myself and something I believe in, typically if I can invest in myself and get around people, I want to be around. That's the key. Yep. To me is like, it's like a hamburger. It's like, I got the content is the meat, but there's also like a bunch of other stuff. And most of that stuff that I love is networking and just hanging out and getting to know people and building friendships. It's true. So, all right, man. Well, thanks for breaking it down for us, dude. You got it, bro. Um, Thank you guys for being here. We're going to shoot another podcast with Ramiz this week. I'm not sure how often we're going to release that one, but we're podcast is, is something I love doing, man. So let's keep let's keep it up. It's a ton so of fun. Hope you guys get value. Uh, we will see you again next time on the next 8% Nation podcast.